one. In today's video, I have a confession to make. I have been arrested and sent to jail for aggravated assault. So stick around, I'm gonna tell you how that happened, what the outcome was, and a, a couple of great lessons that you can take away from my situation. That's what's coming up next here on Survival on Purpose. Welcome back to Survival on Purpose. My name is Brian, thanks for joining me. And yes, it is true, I was arrested and jailed for aggravated assault. I'm gonna tell you about that, tell you the story and the outcome and some lessons in just a minute. But first, a big thank you to the folks at Hog Holsters for sponsoring today's video. Hog Holsters makes the concealed carry holster I wear every day and have for several years now. They're also the sponsor of this year's coverage for the 2023 SHOT Show coming up in just a few days. Uh, if you can go to their website, Use the coupon code survival on purpose, all one word, and you can save 10% on your order over 30 bucks. Okay, so let's talk about my arrest for aggravated assault. And I wanted to share this with you because there's been some things that happened in the news lately and some comments I've gotten on some videos lately that, that I thought this would be a really relevant topic to talk about. So let me just tell you what happened. First of all, it was a long time ago. All right, so I was like 19 years old, so it was quite a while back. Maybe I was 18, I, I can't remember. But I was arrested and charged with aggravated assault and went to jail. Now, you may be wondering how in the world I'm, I'm talking about concealed carry because aggravated assault is a felony. Well, I'm going to get to that. Just bear with me. So let me just tell you what happened first. And we'll talk about the lessons that to be learned in just a minute. But first, let me just tell you what happened. So I was in high school. And we, our, our football team was in the uh, playoffs for the state or regional, some kind of championship. I don't know. It was a long time ago. And so we were, we were young, young, stupid high school people. And one of the, one of the uh, coaches said, bring something to make noise, you know, so whatever. So I went to the little corner store and I bought myself a little cap pistol. A little, they call them starter pistols. And they use the little red ring caps, if you know what I'm talking about. Little plastic ring caps. Look like a little 38 pistol, right? So we were at this football game, and we got whistles going and horns blowing, and I'm popping this pistol off in the, in the, in the stands in the air. No big deal. Nobody said a word throughout the entire game. As we're leaving the uh, stadium, uh, we look up, and we are behind the opposing football team's bus, and they've got, they've got this sign on back. So one of the guys with me said, hey, we need to get up behind that bus and snatch that sign off and take it back because because that's the kind of stupid stuff you do in high school, right? But I had this little pistol in my hand. So we're blowing the horn at them. I'm hanging out the window, pop, pop, pow, pow, pow the whole way, you know, putting little red caps in it. And they're hanging moons out the back window and all this stuff. We're thinking, okay, we're just having a good old time. No big deal. So we, we followed them all the way to the high school. And as they were turning in, the, the guy driving, for some reason, decided to cut around the bus and go into the high school. I guess he's thinking he's going to turn around in the high school. But we got back there and there was nowhere to turn around. And the first bus came in and parked and the, the bus driver got out and he was really, really mad. It was their head coach. He's like, what are you guys doing? I said, look, it's a cap gun. He said, y'all need to get out of here. This other bus driver is really, really mad. They've been talking on the radio. He wants, he wants to call the police on you guys. You need to go. So we started to leave. The other bus comes in and this coach jumps out of it. The driver pointing his finger saying, you're going to jail. You're going to jail. Call the cops, call the cops. So the police come, long story short, um, the cop asked me what's going on. I said, look, we got this little blank gun. It's a cap gun, a little red plastic caps, blah, blah, blah. He said, man, this coach is really mad. He wants y'all to go to jail. He wants to make it. He wants y'all to learn a lesson. He said, so he tried, to his credit, this, this police officer tried for about two hours to talk this cop out of pressing charges. I mean, to talk this driver out of pressing charges to no avail. He said, look, guys, I'm sorry. I got to take you to jail. I mean, he was a really, he was really, he understood we were just doing something stupid and we had, we meant nothing harmful. But same time, and take us to jail. So imagine my surprise when I get to, I'm thinking, okay, we're going to be disturbing the peace or some sort of stupid stuff. I get there and they tell me the charge is aggravated assault, which even then at 18, 19, I knew that's a big deal. That's like a felony. It means you can't vote and you can't have guns. So I thought, man, this is a huge deal. And so the first we went before the justice of the peace and there's a guy in there, there was a guy's wife in there who was filing charges against him for trying to stab her. So anyway, that, that falls into the story in a minute. So we go to justice to peace. He's like, you guys are stupid. What are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. This coach wants to press charges. I'm locking you up. So they took my little 18-year-old self into the jail cell. I'd never been in jail, never been in any kind of trouble with the police before. I'm in this jail cell thinking, man, this is horrible. My friends got out of jail way before I did because of some sort of a bond issue. Anyway, I'm there by myself. 
all I've heard these horror stories about jail and prison. This is a one little cell, like a drunk tank cell. There is this gigantic, huge, bearded biker looking dude passed out under the bench over there. There's like a little concrete. He's like passed out. And then there's the, 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 the wife stabber is in there too with me. And he was a, he looked like a wife stabber might look like. Um, so anyway, um, I'm over here just waiting on my parents to come bail me out. People in the other jails are yelling, hey, wake your Yankee up over there. Wake him. And I'm thinking, man, I hope he sleeps until I'm gone. But he wakes up. Big biker looking dude. So I'm like, what are you in? He's like, what you in for, man? I said, aggravated assault. <laughs> it probably sounded more like aggravated assault. So anyway, long story short, I get out. And we, we, get us a, we get us one of them there attorneys, and I'm like, how in the world can this be aggravated assault? It wasn't even a real gun. And the answer I got was, it says it doesn't matter. He thought it was a real gun. All he, his, his report was that he's driving along, this car wheels out beside him, an arm comes out the window, and he sees gunfire. I didn't say at the time, but we've been behind this guy for like 15 miles shooting this gun out the, out the window the whole time. So maybe he was oblivious, or maybe he was just, I don't know. Either way, we went to jail, we got out of jail, we entered into an agreement that if we don't do anything, we had to write letters of apologies and all this stuff, but if we don't do any, any, get any more trouble for a year, they will drop the charges, dismiss the case. So we didn't, and they did. Um, however, when I went to get my first concealed carry permit a couple of years later, that there was no disposition listed on the case. It kicked it back, so I had to talk to the DA, and they got it all straightened out. So it's all good now. But I did go to jail for aggravated assault. Thankfully, the charges were, were dismissed. But the reason I bring this up now is because, like I said, I've had people, I've had comments from people on some of my concealed carry videos. They say some really stupid things. People talk about, I'll do this, and I'll do that, and I'll just do this, and I'll just pull my gun. All I got to do is show my gun, and they leave. So I want to read you a couple things about the law, aggravated assault. Because, again, I was like, I don't know how in the world this could be aggravated assault with a cap gun. First of all, this is from the uh, Georgia, Georgia law. Many people confuse the word assault with the term battery. Assault is limited to situations where words, actions, and conduct fall short of making contact. The physical arm is, harm part is battery, so that's why you hear about assault and battery. Assault in Georgia is the threat of harm to another human being, which reasonably causes the other person to feel afraid of such threatened violence. Aggravated assault is defined as that assault with a deadly weapon. So in other words, because I had a gun in my hand, or what looked like a gun, it was a gun, it was a blank gun, a cap gun, but it was a gun, and he thought that he was in fear, that's, that's aggravated assault. The aggravated part is because of the deadly weapon. Which means for you and me, people talk about just pulling their weapon, brandishing their weapon or whatever, you could actually be charged with aggravated assault for just drawing a pistol. Or carrying, or, or a rifle, if, if somebody's scared, if they really truly believe that you threaten them. Um, so it depends on your municipality, how, 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 I guess, aggressive the prosecutors would be, but it could be a really, really big deal. So Chug Norris's email address is gmail at Chug Norris. The, the moral of this story is that carrying a firearm is not only a right, because I believe it is our right, but it is also a heavy responsibility. You have to behave. You have to be responsible, and it's not a, it's not a, a it's not used to intimidate people or to um, get your way or, or to try to back somebody down. The only time you should you should pull your firearm is if you are seriously in fear for your life or somebody else's life or serious bodily harm. So actually just doing this and somebody, somebody's giving you a hard time, you know, and just doing this, showing your pistol, that could be considered aggravated assault. So bottom line, use wisdom, use caution, and don't say stupid stuff on the internet because that could be used against you in court as well. So that's it. I, hopefully this has been a reasonably informative video and maybe, maybe an interesting story, if nothing else. I really appreciate you watching Survival on Purpose. Remember, survival is not an accident, so be prepared. I'll see you next time.